Good morning, folks. Space Weather News is coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona, pre-sunrise in the West. We're here ready to kick off this year's Electric Universe Conference today. Details on that and the upcoming Observers events will be coming a bit later in this video. But first, we've got a bit of space weather to see today, a bit more in terms of Earth weather, also some excellent article links. But as always, we're going to begin over at spaceweathernews.com and check out the last day on our star in 193 angstroms. Large dark coronal holes we'll discuss momentarily, but otherwise we see only minor pops and surface surging. Lone ejecta was a CME seen erupting from the far side of the sun and heading north. Despite departing sunspots, a big group in the middle, and some new ones at the eastern limb, solar flaring remains low and should continue that way. Solar wind is another story, however, as waning streams this morning may see one more impact today, and if so, that tropical system south of Mexico is going to intensify in a big way. We're calm now, though. Top seismic event of the last day was way up north in the Atlantic. Always fun up there. Seismicity has been of the lower magnitude since that six-pointer hit Vanuatu earlier in the week. Next coronal holes incoming on the south, however, with stronger fields than what we just saw on the north. Top links today begin with this. Uncertainties in greenhouse gas forcing is unlikely to improve without greater inclusion of natural variability from things like the sun. How about this? Greg, one of the big boys over at LASP, and I submit that the 20 years of failed global warming predictions will not get straightened out until we get space weather straightened out, currently ignored. Speaking of the climate, we've also got the global precipitation and temperature maps for May. I'm sure some of those rain events haven't escaped your memory just yet, and we actually saw fewer of the extreme areas this last month in terms of temps, likely due to a more neutral ENSO scenario on its way to La Nina. Speaking of temperatures, we have a huge earth spot in Canada, counterclockwise wind drive around the cell, and at this scale it'll have major arctic temperature implications as a warm stream is funneling right into the polar area with a chill sent down the western edge of the low. Speaking of North America, severe weather struck the Ohio, PA, and West Virginia areas yesterday but will shift southward tonight and include our plasma lab down in Georgia, likely getting it in the overnight hours. Major warnings down under, look at eastern Australia as we shift to the radar forecast. This is going to be the majority of the weekend for you folks, eyes open. Also we'll see intense downpours from Central Europe and up into Scandinavia, eyes on your local forecasts as well. As I mentioned, EU 2016 begins today. My talk is tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. local time, and you can live stream the event if unable to make it to Phoenix. Their world opens up at thunderbolts.info. The next Observers event is July 9th in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Details are at observatoryproject.com. And next week, registration opens for our next conference, Observing the Frontier. It'll be the third one. Registration will be available to website members of suspiciousobservers.org about one day earlier than everyone else. That conference will be in April of 2017. We've got shots of our star to close. It is 2.45 a.m. in the original Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.